which is now uh, in the month of March during the conference <clears throat> will be our fifth year of marriage. Amen. Amen to that. Amen. <laughs> and so <laughs> we go ahead and say it. I haven't even introduced you yet, but it's all right. <laughs> but <laughs> Amen. Uh, I'm saying this because it, it shows a few things here uh, for my beloved listening audience that if you are about your father's business, he will not only provide all of your need according to his yes. riches and glory, Amen. but he will also give you the desires of your heart. And yes, while I didn't know that I needed to be married, God knew best. Amen. And so we are here today to introduce some of the team that is making up the conference for 2022. And without further ado, I want to introduce, first of all, the chair for the Great Commission Ministry, Reverend Cecil Cunningham. Reverend Cecil, how are you? Man, I'm hey, doing... Reverend Cecil. Hello, hello, hello. Uh... Uh, I'm just doing absolutely great, uh, Brother Mac. Uh, we appreciate you, you know, so much for allowing us this opportunity, uh, as you have indicated over the last several years, to be a part of um, uh, your adoration uh, 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 radio talk show. Uh, we we are, we're very grateful to um, uh, to the, the 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 entire audience uh, who'll be, uh, who are, are tuning in and, and, uh, and, and listening to, to, uh, the presentation tonight. And, uh, very grateful to, uh, um, to some of the other members that, that you identify as some of the members that are, uh, that participate in the missions, uh, missions team at Colonial and the missions, uh, conference planning, you know, at Colonial. And, you know, I, I know we'll, We'll, we'll get a chance to introduce each one of them and they'll have an opportunity to say a little bit about themselves. But I just want to, again, thank you, you know, for having us to, uh, to be on uh, uh, with you tonight. Uh, this is our, our, our 20, 23rd annual missions conference that's coming up. You know, again, we'll talk a little bit more in detail as we, we come forward. And, and I, I, I cannot go forward without making a connection, uh, Brother Mac, with the story that you told, uh, the very heartwarming story that you told about you and, uh, and, and Sister Myra, you know, uh, 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 joining together uh, in forces in marriage and in missions, uh, without mentioning uh, Clarence Smith again, uh, from, from being one of the, uh, the innovators, you know, the original members that brought forward this missions conference uh, some 23 years ago. Um, and so we're grateful to him on a number of, uh, of fronts, uh, certainly including uh, being uh, just a great, uh, a fantastic uh, friend and mentor, you know, to, to moi, you know, to, uh, to myself. <laughs> also, also just want to give a shout out to uh, our pastor, uh, Dr. Robert Anderson Jr., uh, mm -hmm. who had the vision, uh, I guess about 24 years ago, uh, to uh, when he came into Colonial and uh, 25 years ago, actually, we just celebrated his anniversary uh, this past uh, October, uh, Brother Mac, 25 years at Colonial. Praise God for, for, for his, uh, his resilience and his uh, stick to itiveness to, uh, to stay with us. Sometimes we've been a little bit hard headed, uh, but he's hung in there with us uh, for 25 years. And uh, he had the vision to create a missions, uh, a missions team, a missions ministry. And, and from that uh, from that vision, here we are, you know, 25 years later, and uh, we're, we're grateful that God has allowed us the opportunity to walk alongside him uh, in this great ministry of reconciling men, women, boys, and girls to Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And I, I can say, um, Reverend C, so that um, getting back to Brother Clarence, um, when I put out a newsletter every month, and he is the first one to respond. It seems like the moment I send it out, immediately I can expect him to uh, return a message to me of encouragement. Yeah. Um, he's been a great influencer of me personally, um, mm -hmm. of our marriage. And um, I know when you took over 
uh, the chair duties um, that it was a beautiful transition, which um, I, I was just so excited about because you two represent uh, one of um, our favorite people um, when it comes to the conference and just your demeanor to always be calm, cool, and collected. And I know that things are going crazy around you. Um, you are the steadying factor that makes the conference go no matter what other people are doing. I always look to the leadership of things. And when the leader is steady, then the program is steady. And so I, I thank you for your friendship, for your wife's uh, friendships, uh, Sister Karen, and you guys have been a blessing to us personally and just overall uh, setting the tone for what the GCM has come to be. And I could really just stop right there, but here's the thing, that there are three others, and I have to recognize them yeah. as well because they all play important roles into making sure that the Great Commission Conference is successful by God's standards. They do. And so if you're going to have a chair, mm -hmm. then that means that you normally have a vice chair. Yeah. Now, this young man I'm getting ready to introduce, he's an avid lover of golf. Yep. And, you know, I get jealous every time he posts something on social media um, because he shows beautiful horizons landscapes airscapes and he talks sports and he ribs me every once in a while too <laughs> and normally i can just take it because i know that he's kidding but in all seriousness i really appreciate him because when it comes to keeping things in order during the conference he's the one that makes sure that everyone has the equipment that they need also make sure that uh, everyone is stationed in their places at the appropriate time. And that's key. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Brother Leon Clark. Brother Leon, what's going on? Hey, amen. amen. Leon. Hey, my brother. It's uh, always good to be a, a part of this show. Um, uh, I'm not sure if I was on this last year or not. I know one year I ended up having to miss because we did a missions moment on that same night, <laughs> that particular year. And so um, Cecil and I had discussed that uh, it would probably be better for him to be on there as opposed to me. But I do enjoy coming on here. I do uh, enjoy communicating with you and your lovely wife um, as we prepare for this. And uh, we're thankful for you because we did uh, ask you to do quite a bit in this conference this year, but we know that uh, God never gives us more than we can bear. So uh, we're thankful for you. We're thankful for Myra. We're thankful for your ministries that you do, uh, not only in Guatemala, but in the Congo and some of the other places that you touch. I think, believe me, Nepal is one of the other places that you touch. And so uh, we're just thankful that you have. Uh, your thirst for the Lord and his work has never waned and that uh, as much as he gives you, you try to take on. So we're thankful to be a part of this show tonight. And we just uh, thank you for giving us an audience that we might be able to bring our missions conference to and the details about that missions conference. Man. You know, it, it, it is a blessing, uh, Brother Leon. And um, you know, when you were talking about those things that the Lord allows, I was actually going uh, to the actual text because it, it, the word of God actually says that he makes a way of escape. And I was thinking about that. So, I, you know, with my little feeble brain, I said, well, that means that if he doesn't make a way of escape for me, I've got to follow through. Amen. And go ahead and do whatever you guys have me assigned to do. So um, I'm, I'm excited. Um, uh, I, I won't lie to you guys. Um, it was praise and worship that actually got me to the mission field. It started many a year ago when through praise and worship, it uh, allowed me 
a trip to the Grand Caymans. Mm. And that was really my be beginning as far as uh, missions internationally. And from there, it has taken me to Haiti, to the Democratic Republic of Congo, to Ethiopia, mm. uh, to Rwanda now, and yes, uh, in Nepal and Guatemala. Yeah. And it seems like every time I turn around, that list is expanding because I'm now speaking with somebody in reference to a possibility of going to both uh, Nigeria and also Kenya. Amen. So through it all, um, the GCM has been a major factor in my personal progress as a minister of the gospel. Mm -hmm. um, but your friendship, uh, Brother Leon, has been crucial um, because you, as I said before, you've been that calming factor that I know that no matter what uh, areas you guys might have me doing, that you'll make sure that everything is set up and ready to go. So all I have to do is show up and show out for God. Amen. 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 I appreciate that. I really do. I really You're do. You're very and welcome. Here's the thing. If I only left it at Reverend Cecil and Brother Leon, that would be enough that could fill the pages of many a book. But see, what I know and what scripture proves is that the real uh, the power, the intensity, and the heart of the conference comes by way of our women. And we have two wonderful women that are joining along with us this evening. And I'm going to introduce the first of those women uh, by the name of Sister Tanya Yancey. And Sister mm. Tanya, I also like what she does because she handles everything public relations related for Amen. the church in general and for the GCM. So, Sister Tanya, welcome. Thank you for having me, Brother Mac. Um, I am so grateful to be here tonight um, amongst um, everyone. Um, I just want to give a shout out to my good friend, Jan Terry. We've been friends mm -hmm. since 1980 something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, Dating yourself. Yeah. <laughs> It's been awesome. <laughs> so good. She's been an awesome influence in my life. So I just yeah. want to thank it. Um, I'm grateful for the opportunity to serve God in this capacity um, to work alongside um, so, uh, Brother Leon, Sister Jan, and all the members of um, Colonial's Missions Conference. Um, mission started for me um, in 2007 when uh, my aunt, my dear aunt passed away. She was an avid person uh, in the missions committee. And when she passed away, another aunt was on the committee and asked me to join. And I've been in love with missions ever since. Amen. So, so grateful and very honored to be here serving God in this capacity. So thank you so much for having us today. Amen. Yes, it, it's, Amen. Always, it's always great to have you. Um, I cannot tell you again, um, when um, I look at all the things that go on behind the scenes, knowing that I know who's a, a part of that, it's, um, it's so exciting and that, you know, over the years, um, when you guys actually allow me to come into the house of the Lord <laughs> and um, I'm able to see everybody, it's just so exciting to know that all of you all have grafted my wife and I into the colonial family Amen. And um, I I'm telling you right now, I can't share everything, but I have some big plans that uh, Colonial is going to help me out with coming down the pipe. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, because uh, my wife and I have had to make some life decisions, and uh, I think Colonial is going to be a big part of that because out of all the churches in the area, um, you guys have been the most consistent. You guys have been the most faithful. And I'm not saying that to throw shade at any other house of worship. They've all been great. Amen. But you know how you can walk into somebody's home and they don't have to say anything, but you already feel the presence of being welcomed, the presence of 
being accepted, that yeah. you can just, in fact, I'll give you the perfect example for me. When I'm most comfortable walking into the house, I kick my shoes off. That's a sign that I like where I'm at. I feel Amen. comfortable. Amen. And spiritually, I'm kicking my shoes off every time I walk through the doors. Amen. Yes. That's a yes. blessing. Amen. Amen. And so Amen. since Sister, Sister Tanya did part of my job for me, that only leaves one other person that, now, she's not new to Colonial, but no. she's new to this uh, program. And so, Sister Jan Terry, how hey. are you? I am well by the grace of God. And I thank you for the invitation to join you tonight. Um, when I think of missions, I get really excited because the Lord has been with me through the 80s, starting out in the Philippines. That was the first time I was ever encountered missions. I went with a singing group and um, it was for two weeks to do work in the hot Philippines. And from that, my love of missions started. And so I'm so grateful. If I can, I'd like to share um, a verse with you or a couple of verses with you that I want to make uh, part of my ministry. And that's Psalm 34. And it reads, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. And I'm so grateful that God gives us opportunities to magnify him in missions. Amen. 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 So, you Amen. know, um, our... our our uh, histories are very similar, Sister Jan, because um, I was a part of a mission team called Meet Me in Africa. Okay. And originally, I was set to go to Angola. But hmm. uh, what happened was, this was right around the time, if you guys remember, there was a movie that was out called Blood Diamond. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and so... There was a lot of unrest in yeah. Angola to the point where they wouldn't allow our group to come in because okay. it was too dangerous. Okay. And so that actually became a blessing in disguise because at first I was discouraged. I was like, because I, I had studied about Angola and, you know, I, I, I prepared my mind and my heart for that area no matter what the dangers were, I, I mentally and spiritually prepared myself, but then I ended up in Congo. And the, the purpose of that mission trip was to actually be both uh, ministry and music. And basically from the music side of things, it was an interaction between Congolese uh, musicians and musicians in the US. And that's, that was my, my big introduction into what we're doing right now. Yes. Honestly, um, it was from that trip um, that I realized that I didn't want to just come back home and have my bio state that I went to the Congo. Yeah. I knew that that area needed help. And I decided at that point on a plane, 18 hours coming back, Mm. that I was going to dedicate my life to the mission field. I made Amen. that decision in flight. Amen. Amen. But I'm saying that to say that, that that music ministry gift is such a way of being able to tear down strongholds. Yes, that's yeah. so true. Yeah, because I'll tell you this, and then I promise I'll shut up, but <laughs> through the music ministry, it allowed me to then bring forth the word in Congo in yeah. a soccer stadium with 7,000 people. Mm. I never intended mm -hmm. for that to happen. That was, that was not part of the plan, but God had another plan. Amen. Amen. And so I'm just saying that to everybody on the line here. We don't know what this conference is meant for. No. 
we we might have what we have in our plan, but God always has another plan. And yes. his plan is always that we should prosper Amen. in everything and that he would be glorified in earth and in heaven. Right. And so to everyone here, as we continue our conversation, I just want to encourage you all because you're going to have a group of missionaries that are coming through in the month of March. And even though this time is virtual, it's the same premise. It gives missionaries that are all over the globe an opportunity to share Jesus Christ yes. and to share the stories because Revelation tells us that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. And yes. that testimony is so critical. It doesn't matter, Sister Tanya, public relations, it matters because it's all kingdom work. Being the chair, it matters because it's all kingdom work. Being a, a missionary to, to Ghana, you know, Sister uh, Jan, it's all part of God's plan. And, and Brother Leon, the same, everything, administration, all of it is critical. And when we all understand that we are just lively stones with Christ as mm -hmm. the chief corner, then we can understand how the church should be built. And then we can say, well, let's go ye therefore teach all nations, Thank baptizing God. them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever commanded. And lo, he's with us always. Amen. Even until the end of the world. That's Amen. that's the mission. That's, that's the mission. Amen. With that said, because y'all trying to get me to preach, and this is really about you guys. <laughs> 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 so I'm just going to put it out here. And this is just kind of an open question for everyone, because this is the 23rd year of this conference. What are you hoping to accomplish through the conference this year? If, if, I, if I might weigh in uh, uh, here, Brother Mac, and, and, and please know that we're always open to a sermon <laughs> from, from, from Evangelist Lewis McElwain. We're always, always open to a sermon from you. And uh, you know, we'll be looking forward to hearing from you in, in several different ways you know, during the, uh, during the month of March. And, and we just, uh, again, always just so grateful uh, for, uh, for how you and Sister Myra just say yes. <laughs> you, just, you just say yes. We, whatever we ask uh, for you guys to do, you, you just say yes, you show up. And, uh, and your presence is so important for any number of reasons, right? Uh, uh, one of the, 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 the purposes of this conference is to, um, is to make, others aware of the great need uh, for missionaries, for career missionaries. You know, a lot of people often say, uh, well, there's so much need in our local communities. There's so much need in, uh, within our state, within Baltimore, within, within the U.S. Uh, and that's very true. Uh, I, my first introduction, Sister Jan, uh, to, to missions work was, was my mother, who okay. was a, a, a home missionary. You know, okay. with the with the white dress and you know, and and, and her other uh, uh, ladies that went along with her on Sunday afternoons to do uh, 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 missions work. You know, attending to other uh, elder elderly people in the community and, and 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 meeting some of those needs. And and I was pretty, I was a child at that time. Uh, I never had any idea <laughs> that uh, at the age that I am, I'm not going to tell you my age, <laughs> but that at the age that I am, that I would be doing the work that um, um, that my mother kind of laid um, some some groundwork for me to be doing. Mm -hmm. But the, 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 the need is great for career missionaries, for missionaries yeah. uh, that, that go into great. the field like Sister Jan and, and like yeah. yourself and, and Miss, uh, Miss Myra uh, to, to, to the uttermost parts of, of the world. The need is great. And the need is even greater for mm -hmm. African Americans yes. to join in that um, uh, that that career field for missions work, it's yeah. estimated that um, um, 
the International Mission Board, which of course we we support um, in, 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 in missions work, is estimated of the approximately 4,000 missionaries that they have worldwide, that there's only 13 African-American missionaries yeah. amongst that group. Mm -hmm. and, and the question continues yeah. to be raised by uh, by, by individuals or nationals in the various areas that they go, um, where are the, the, the African-Americans? Where are the people who, who look yeah. like us? Um, yeah. they, they certainly, they welcome anyone who coming to share the, the living word of God with them. Uh, but the, the question is like, where are the people who look like us? So part, yeah. of, uh, part of the reasons that, that this missions conference is so important is to, 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 to raise and, the, the, and heighten the, uh, um, um, the, the interest, you know, of others who may be sitting on the cross of making that decision that, you know, here I am, Lord, you, you know, send me, um, you, you know, and so, so we want to make sure that we continue to do this work and, and provide this platform for people to come and to see and to be encouraged uh, to go on, uh, to be involved with missions. Because the reality is that we do want people to go like yourselves, like Sister Jan, like uh, you know, all of us who, who've had that opportunity to go. Uh, we want everyone to be able to go. Pastor Anderson's uh, goal was to have every one of our members go on a short-term mission trip. You know, we've been working at that over the years. <laughs> we've had a lot of, uh, of our members that have actually gone on short-term mission trips. Uh, uh, through that effort, uh, several years ago, we had one of our members who grew up within us, you know, from, from the lawns of Colonial Baptist Church, who actually uh, became a career missionary through the IMB uh, program. You know, yeah. she's gone on to do some other things now, but but we but God bless the Colonial. It's something that we've been praying for for many years. We still don't know what God has in store for us. We see Sister Jan sitting over here. We don't know how Sister how the, how the Lord is going to be working with uh, with with Sister Jan and maybe even others to make that commitment. But that's the purpose of the missions conference: is to keep uh, is to keep that hope alive. To uh, 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 Jesus told us to go. It was very clear in Matthew 20, uh, 28, 19, and twenty. He told us to go. Um, now again, we want everyone to physically go. Um, everybody can't go. You, you know, everybody just some aren't physically able to go. Our uh, brother Matt. Um, some aren't financially able to go, uh, so for various reasons. But we all can go in one way or another. If we can't physically go, we can we can come to the missions conference and and the love up on those missionaries that are there who are going. That, that's one way we can we can go by showing the love of Christ to those missionaries. Another way that people can go is by giving. It's it's it's, it's crucially important that the missions, missions efforts are supported financially. Yeah. You know, we, we need, the missionaries need that financial support as they go from place to place. Mm -hmm. uh, particularly during this pandemic, where many have faced a lot of challenges and you know that yourself, I think uh, Sister Myra is maybe dealing with one of those challenges right now. There's some costs that's involved in those visas and, and you know, doing some yeah. of the things that need to be done to, to go from place to place. Yeah, uh, and then certainly the other thing is that we can all pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. if, even if we can't give, we can pray. Everybody can. It yeah. doesn't cost any anyone uh, um, anything uh, to be able to uh, to pray. So, so those are some of the underlying reasons why we do, you know, what we do. Uh, Brother Mac, just a couple of years ago, uh, and then I'm gonna shut down. Uh, just a couple <laughs> of years ago, we had a young lady that wandered into our doors. Um, uh, at, at the church, um, she she wasn't sure where she was going. You know, she I, I heard about this missions conference. God has been tugging at my heart to go to go on a missions conference, and uh, to go on a, on a, on a mission trip or go become a missionary. And as I listened to her story, I looked up and I saw a Myra McAway, <laughs> and there was no better person <laughs> that I could direct her to than Myra McAway who had been on the mission field for over two decades, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and so, so uh, there was a connection that was made. This young lady saw someone who looked like her, who was willing to share her story, who was willing to share the love of Christ with her, who was willing along with you 
to partner with, to partner, you know, with her uh, in, in a lot of different ways. And um, so, so that's why we do what we do. Amen. That's right. And, and that, that young lady that you're uh, referring to, um, her name is Kim. Mm -hmm. And she's, <laughs> we've adopted her into our household as our daughter. Mm -hmm. um, she just got crazy enough to trust everything that Myra laid before her. And, and by the way, Reverend Cecil, um, we also, uh, just in case Myra uh, couldn't handle it on her own, we brought in Adam and Diana Nathanson Amen. as well. And you know, they are currently in Venezuela. Right. Yeah. right. And so uh, we had them all over for, for dinner. Mm -hmm. And so she had an opportunity to meet other missionaries. Okay. And now she's not only in Nigeria, mm -hmm. she's married. Wow. Bye. Bye. Mm. All right. Yeah. Bye. And that's wow. because she walked into the door and ran into Reverend Cecil. Reverend Cecil handed her off to my wife, Myra, and then Myra handed her off to the Nathansons, and we handed her off to the world. That, that's Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's what, a great, what, that's a, great yeah. what a great story. What a great story. That's worth the applause. And, you know, again, um, I just think it's important for our audience to understand that um, missions you know, we, we talk about it from an international point of view so often, but honestly, uh, missions can be going to your neighbor next door. Yes. Missions can be uh, in the grocery store line. It can be wherever it needs to be. Yeah. Th that going out uh, into the community is just that going out and uh, just being willing to share the gospel. So again, um, I had to chime in on that one because uh, Kim is very special to us. I still have that question out there because we did hear Reverend Cecil's version. Anybody else, at least one other one to chime in because we're 23 years into this conference. And I know that the conference has had a great impact, um, but what does it mean to you, anyone? Well, I'm always grateful for um, the missions conference. When I think about how we got started in missions and where we're going, um, I'm grateful that we can share our experiences of what we have experienced on the mission field. And, uh, for me, Brother Cecil and Brother Leon and Tanya and Brother McElwain, I have a lot of different examples of how um, your faith plays a big part when you're on the mission field. There are some times that you, you don't know what's gonna happen next. So your faith has gotta be big. Like my African brothers and sisters say, I want to have great big faith. And so I have adopted that in my ministry to have great big faith, whether coming or going, um, my experience is just didn't start in the Philippines. I was able to travel to Jamaica with uh, Reverend Pat Kelly and work with him and also to Ghana and Togo, Benin, Ethiopia. So all those experiences um, make it great for me to share that there are very little African Americans on the mission field. Um, one short story is we were traveling in Ghana to a remote village. And I mean, the cars couldn't even get through, the trucks couldn't get through. But once we got there to see uh, the village, the people ran from us mm. because they couldn't believe that brown people were coming to see them. They <laughs> ran from us and then they ran towards us with their faces covered. And all they wanted to do was touch our skin. Um, just in awe that brown people were carrying the gospel of Jesus Christ 
because they were so used to seeing white missionaries. Amen. So yeah, there is a need for us to be on the field. And, you know, I sometimes think of the excuses that people give, well, I don't know what's gonna happen and I might not like the food and I might not be able to do this, but all mm -hmm. God wants is our availability. He'll, yes. He will take care of the rest. Amen. He'll do everything else, but he just wants us to be fat Christians, faithful, available, and teachable. Amen. Amen. You know what, Sister Jan, maybe we should switch spots. Maybe you ought to be in my chair. Now. <laughs> no, 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 you're doing good. <laughs> you're doing good. I'm just, I get excited, even with just leaving Ghana, um, in January, I got excited of the opportunities that our young people are hungering for. Um, there were times that I was able to minister in music and, you know, meeting two of my young sisters said, I wish I could have that same enthusiasm and zeal that you have when you sing. And, you know, I share with them that it comes from a heart that is grateful for what the Lord has done. Don't look around at the congregation. Look up and look to him Amen. as you minister, minister to him, and he can use you in a great big way. Amen. 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 Wow. That's, in, that's incredible. Amen. Um, <laughs> you, you are so right. Um, um, also, having been able to go into similar areas, just the response of seeing someone of color mm -hmm. and and we really need to embrace that that's another reason why I'm, I'm so excited that uh under um pastor anderson there's this this authentic thrust yes. of wanting to go yeah. I, yeah i've heard a lot of leaders say it with words yeah. but colonial is one of the few places that i mean it, it just seems like everything about what you guys are about is centered on going. Yeah. You know, I had to, when, when I ran into uh, uh, Sister Jan uh, a couple of Sundays ago, <laughs> um, I, I, won't, I won't tell the whole story because I know Reverend Cecil will probably share uh, about this a little later, but um, Pastor Anderson was sharing about mm -hmm. a particular missionary of mm. African-American descent yeah. and uh, using uh, um, passages in the Bible that inspired him to sure. go. Mm -hmm. And I was just sitting back with my wife and I, I just said, my God, you can just see it all over um, uh, Pastor Anderson's face that, you know, this is, this is life to him. Yes. And, and it shows, Amen. I mean, when you walk in and you see the, the flags of the nations, it's not just for a one-time event. It's, it's every time you walk through. Those are the things that, um, you know, have compelled me to really want to work with you guys um, because it's just so authentic. Thank you so much for sharing, Sister Jan. Amen. Amen. I, I want to kind of change up a little bit only because we have two others here that I, I definitely want to engage. And so I'm going to go to you first, Brother Leon, because when you are uh, operating as the vice chair, what does that actually mean in reference to the conference? And if you don't even mind sharing beyond just the conference, what is it that you're bringing to the colonial experience? Well, for me, uh, I look at it as making sure that um, the, the chair, uh, Reverend Cecil uh, Cunningham, is has someone he can depend on and that um, as he goes through um, his time with God and he spends that time with God to say, hey, God, what do you want us to do this year with the conference? And he and I talk almost on a daily basis, almost, right, Cecil? Um, uh, especially as we get closer and closer to the conference, we're speaking, but even in the planning phases, he and I are talking even after the missions conference on 
and we're trying to, uh, to me, it's like, we want people to walk away, the missionaries that we support to walk away saying, Colonial is for real about this mission thing. Mm -hmm. We contact people on a regular basis. We don't just wait until the missions conference comes around. We want to stay in touch and know what they're doing. Know, is there any uh, praise reports? Are there any prayer requests? Is there anything we can do from you from a financial perspective? Um, uh, we have an opportunity for this. Do you want to be a part of it? You know, we want to stay engaged with them. We want them to understand to us that they're a family. We want to operate in the way that God uh, wants us to operate, which is at all times he wants us to treat every member who's out on that mission field, it's not just the ones that we um, support um, through prayer financially and so forth, we're praying for missionaries all over the world, even the ones we don't know. Uh, we want to continue to lift them up in prayer through different events that we host through Colonial. Um, many of these missionaries, we feel like we need to support and text on a regular basis or call on a regular basis. Uh, Reverend Cecil makes sure that every Tuesday that anyone that we know needs prayer or needs some sort of financial support or has had a praise report at that staff meeting on Tuesdays, that those people are lifted up, that they're acknowledged. Um, if there are uh, things that are health issues with them, we want to know about them so that we can be lifting them up in prayer. Mm -hmm. um, part of the other things that I see um, as we're uh, in the missions field is that we want that relationship, even with our missionaries, to be personal. We just don't want that one-time report from them. We right. want to know that, you know, we're taxing them, that each day we're trying to lift them up, encourage them, um, uh, because it gets tough out there on the field. And you, you know, and Jan, when she went to Ghana, uh, we stayed in touch with her on a regular basis to pray for her, to lift her up, to encourage her, to encourage the people she was working with. Uh, when you're doing certain things, you know, I get on your radio broadcast from time to time to support you, to let you know this is not just that one weekend where we're just encapsulating and making it look like we care for you. It is a year long mission to keep you guys in our prayers. It's a, it's a year long mission for um, Cecil to constantly keep missions before Colonial as a congregation to let them know, this is not just the missions conference. This is not just the, the, the uh, WMU prayer breakfast, but all year long missions is important to us. The missionaries Man. are important to us. Their families are important to us. We want to be praying uh, because like you, uh, I think one, one of us had pointed out that uh, with COVID, the challenges have been um, numerous, you know, yeah. for resources to try to stay healthy uh, as you're going out there, knowing that you potentially uh, the risks that are out there with COVID, yet alone the risks of, of uh, people who are attacking Christians. So we know that we have to keep our missionaries prayed up. But Cecil and I stay in constant contact. We encourage other members uh, to um, share their ideas. We, we want a free exchange of ideas when we're planning everything. Uh, we, we don't do any of this in a silo. We want to hear from the 14 or 15 people that are constantly a part of the missions conference and constantly support the uh, Thursday night uh, monthly prayers on the four Thursdays. Mm -hmm. uh, we want our missionaries to know Colonial is not playing about this, that Man. we are serious about missions at Colonial and all year long, we are doing things to support missions, not, not just around the world, but like you said, in the local area as well with our Baltimore churches, our Randallstown churches, mm -hmm. with, um, 
the Owens Mills area, um, and any place that we can have an impact for God, that's where we want to be. Um, Cecil is constantly feeding us with opportunities to go here or there and so forth as things come in. And we talk about whether we want to be involved in these different things or can we send someone to represent Colonial? Because this church was sort of birthed as a, uh, a missions church. And so we do not take it lightly. We thank Pastor Anderson again for uh, bringing that fire or that fervor for yeah. missions. We thank you. Uh, we are thankful for knowing people like you and Myra and the Nathansons and the Metzlers and, and uh, Tom Fox and, and, and Denise Morgan. And I mean, we could name <laughs> names until we run out of time on this radio show, but that's what Colonial was about. And my love for missions and my love for all of the people that are on this show, from Tanya to Jan to uh, Cecil and, and all of the others that support us, like Devin and Adrian, and, and just the list goes on, is because of the love we have for you guys as missionaries. It, this, is, this is not fake love. This, we're trying to show agape love for missions and the people who um, do missions and to try to get them what they may need. God is using us in that way to make sure that uh, we help supply whatever it is people need out in the field. And so I am uh, fully in on supporting Cecil as he, uh, God talks to him and lays the plans out to him. I'm just a soldier. I'm like, Cecil, what do we need to do? Tell me what I need to do. I don't care how busy I am. Tell me what it is you need me to do to support this. Um, and I just want to be a humble and faithful servant to the Lord to make sure that missions, um, that his word, because that's really what it's about, his word, that we go out and that we share the light he's placed in us and the, and the fire he's placed in us so that other people can see there's an opportunity to have that same joy, that same uh, excitement that we have about missions at, Col at Colonial to share with other people. You know, So that, that's what I see it as, that uh, being yeah. in the chair position. I'm thankful that God even wants to use a wretch like me. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. Well said. Well said. Okay, the ball is in uh, Sister Tanya's court. So when we think about, well, yeah, let me change it before I even ask the question. Um, public relations can take on many different aspects, but how does it work within the conference and the overall uh, purposes of the church? Well, um, for, for the missions conference, we pretty much, our, our, our goal is to get the word out about the conference, but um, it's, it's sharing all the details about the conference and realizing what information needs to be given at what time and to what audience. Um, we, there are activities for children and teaching children about missions and gearing their hearts and their minds up for serving for serving Christ. And then there are other, other audiences that we want to reach. Um, sometimes um, we we hear about, as Reverend Cecil said, people come in, they've come into the conference because they've heard it word of mouth, or they may have heard it to other, by other churches or by other means. Um, there was a point in time when we were to have a pastor's luncheon um, to bring other pastors in to talk to them about about the conference. Um, so even though we're in a pandemic, that's still, that may have, you know, kind of changed some of that, but that doesn't change the message. Mm -hmm. And the is every year there's a different thing, but the message is we go out, we need to tell others about mission, 
how to get them involved. People have questions. They want to know. They want to know about missionaries. They want to know about what it's like or how can I become a missionary and brighten the corner where I am or where God wants me to go. So I think that for public relations and and, and getting that word out, it, it involves a lot. It involves, again, where what information do I get out at what time? There's a building block approach to getting the information out, making sure we don't give too much too soon, but just enough so that people will know on March the 12th and March the 13th of this year, this is where I should be. This is where I need to, to learn about missions and become involved. And mm -hmm. I think and Sister Jan and um, Reverend Cecil summed it up very nicely. You know, it is about sharing the light of Christ with others. And so I think that um, we do CNN announcements. We do, um, we send out emails. We try to use all forms of communication that we can. Um, and we want to thank you for allowing us to come out and, and talk yeah. about the get the word out. It's And it's not about numbers. It is not about how many people come, but it matters about the people that do come and what they're going to take away from the conference. Amen. Are you going to um, go out and, and do something do something different. Are you going to um, become a missionary here or whether you become a missionary abroad? So um, it's it, again, it's not about the numbers. We want people to come, but we want people to come and have a heart for the Lord and hear what missions, um, what you can do to help in, on the missions field. Amen. 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 Well said. And I'm glad that um, Tanya, in sharing, she actually uh, did something that I should have done at the top of all of this, which was actually to give the dates of the conference. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So for our listening uh, audience, uh, whether it's adoration listeners or anyone else that's um, enjoying this program, uh, the mission conference will take place on Saturday, March 12th, and that mm -hmm. will be a day of workshops, various yeah. workshops, and I'll allow you guys to talk about that in more detail. And then, of course, that will culminate into the Sunday service. And it seems like you have a powerhouse speaker. Again, I won't say anything right now, but um, it, it makes for a great weekend experience of missions. Thank you, uh, Sister Tanya, for sharing. Um, now, one thing that nobody has shared with us, what's this year's theme? It, it's sharing the light of Jesus Christ. We go out sharing the light of Christ with others. And that's based on Matthew 5, 16. Amen. 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 So with that said, I'm going to kind of turn this back over to our chair. Because he's been mighty quiet. Um, <laughs> so we don't, we don't want him to think that all of a sudden that he's uh, not a, a, a proponent of how uh, the conference is going to go. And so I'm going to give him a chance to just share what, what are we doing over the course of this weekend? Yeah. Well, uh, uh, no, I'm just so excited to hear the excitement you know, express over and over again uh, what uh, through Sister Jan, you know, um, um, uh, Sister Tanya and Brother Leon. I mean, it's just so much excitement, Amen. you know, and 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 what they're um, and, and and what they're sharing. Uh, I don't need to say much, <laughs> Brother. <Matthew. laughs> I, I really was hoping that that Sister Tanya would go on and talk about some of those details that I got she's it. So, <laughs> you got it. I got it. If, okay, if, good enough. Go for go for it, Sister Tanya. Okay, so so here's your perspective. Uh, our conference, um, we talked a little bit about what our theme is this year. Our theme is we go out sharing the light of Christ with others. And our workshop dates are Saturday, March the 12th through Sunday, March the 13th. So we're going to talk a little bit about what's going to happen on Saturday and you know, explain, you know, how the conference is going to work. Um 
um, on Saturday, beginning at 9.30, we're going to have, um, uh, you know, introductions, praise and worship. Um, we're going to, um, Brother Leon is going to serve as our master of ceremonies um, beginning that day. And, and I also want to mention and point out that there are special activities in place for our children. So we don't want to forget that. Um, and then we're going to go right into uh, our sermon, which is uh, going to be um, from Pastor Daniel Hun, who's pastor of the Village Church and Church Planting Catalyst for the Baptist Convention of Maryland, Delaware. And then beginning at 1030, our workshops. Now our workshops are important. They're facilitated by our missionaries. And um, we're going to um, hear um, special uh, uh, presentations from them. Um, we have Dr. Mark Croston, who's the National Director of Black Church Ministries, Lifeway Christian Resources. And the title of his workshop is going to be Dwindling Discipleship and the Current Missional Challenge. Dr. Croston is going to serve as our special guest speaker on that Sunday morning. So I just wanted to um, bring that out as well. At 1030 is our, our children activities and they will be facilitated by Dr. Denise Morgan. And you kind of talked about her a little earlier today. She's the Children's Bible Ministries of Maryland. Also, uh, Sister Estella Gambrel and Sister Mary Small will be assisting her with the children activities. The children activities are called the Light Children share others is bright. There will be many games, arts and crafts, and that'll all happen on Saturday at 10.30 a.m. for children ages five to 12. Um, going back on Saturday for our workshops, reaching and empowering college students, which will be facilitated by Tiffany Afakwa. Um, who is the InterVarsity Christian Fellowship, George Washington University. So we're very excited about that. Um, we'll have uh, at 1230, we have a break, um, which will have a, um, a panel discussion. And in that panel discussion, it will be a question and answer period, which will also be uh, facilitated by Tiffany Afakwa and Jason Thomas, who is from the International Missions Board. Uh, the afternoon will continue beginning at one o'clock. We'll, we'll uh, reconvene uh, with the International Missions uh, facilitated by Jim and Jennifer Bowers, who are missionaries to Mali, West Africa. And then at 2 p.m. we'll close. Sunday morning, we start off at on the 13th with mm -hmm. five with Sunday School of the Bible, and our missionaries will, um, at that time, give us, um, facilitate our Sunday School services, and then at 10.30 a.m., we'll have our worship service with our special guest speaker, Dr. Mark Croston. Um, so, and definitely, of course, we don't want to uh, miss our special uh evangelist Myra and Lewis McElwain. So I would be remiss if I did not say that we are awesome to have them with us for this conference. Um, anything, please let me know, Brother Cecil, Jan, and Reverend, uh, Reverend Cecil. Amen. Thank you so much. And um, Amen. Uh, my wife and I, we are very excited. I was uh, looking over the whole month of March. Then I looked and said, oh, on March 16th, we're sharing again <laughs> with our colonial family. So I was uh, very, very excited. You guys are making sure that you get as much out of us as possible. And I see uh, Rem Cecil with an uh, interesting look on his face right now as if uh, basically says, gotcha. <laughs> but, but what 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 that what the look is saying is that there's more. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> there's, there's more. Uh, there's more. And um, I uh, um, uh, thank you, Sister Tanya. I mean, you Amen. can see why I default to, to Sister Tanya <laughs> because you know she gives the details and, and she does it very eloquently. And uh, we we just so appreciate her, um, you know, her input and, and and her work with us. Um, 
I do I, I, I do want to acknowledge our brother Mac that on that Saturday, um, and I think Brother Leon may have may have discussed this with you, we have the pleasure of you opening us up with uh, um, some praise and, and, and worship, you know, uh, and then closing us with a little praise and worship. So, so you're kind of, you, you, you are the bookend uh, very appropriately. <laughs> you are the bookend, <laughs> you know, for this, uh, for, for the missions conference. And I just can't think of uh, any, um, a, a person who better, you know, to um, uh, to be there and to to uh, to participate with us on that, and and we just we we thank you. Even, I, I don't know how much any of that is a surprise to you, but I'm saying thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying thank you. Um, now, 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 keep in mind that that um, we 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 keep it. We do keep in mind that your anniversary is just what the day before, I believe, it's is that March 11th? Yeah. Okay. So, so we'll be we'll make sure that we we give you a little uh, a leeway Saturday morning. You know, we'll make sure we 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 that you have us on the agenda that your alarm clock is set. And, and we'll, <laughs> so, so we know there'll be some celebratory time, you know, going on on March the second, and uh, and we'll be celebrating with you uh, for that Amen. fifth anniversary. And we we just Amen. so so grateful that you guys are in town and that we'll have some opportunity. You know, to share in that with you in some way. Amen. 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 Hey, the only thing I ask is um, better give me the time limits uh, because uh, in that praise and worship, uh, I'll get excited and uh, I might go way long. So you just let me know how long and I'll make sure. Two minutes? We, <laughs> this hey, we talked back. about that already. <laughs> Leon and I talked about that already. We, just mess and, with and we have we have Pastor Anderson's bullhorn ready. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I want to go back first to Brother Cecil when you said that uh, we're always looking for African American career missionaries. Well, that's been a prayer of my heart since I started. Um, working in Ghana, West Africa, 1998. And I remember coming back the first year saying, I'm moving to Ghana. Oh, oh. Back in 1998, and my family, you know, laughed and thought it was, oh, she's just into the moment. She's on a high. Um, but God has answered that prayer. I have been offered a job at a medical center as the administrator of the medical center. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. And it's working with Meaningful Life International, in case you want to check it out online, MeaningfulLifeInternational.org. And they do a lot of work for the Lord, like the digging of the wells, um, church planting, uh, reaching out to youth ministries. Um, there's so much, a medical center and work in the villages. So um, with that said, prayerfully by 2023, um, I will be setting my sights on living in Ghana, West Africa as a career missionary. And I'm so excited about what the Lord is getting oh ready to do what he did in the month of December and in January with working with different organizations there and the relationships that have been built. Okay. I solicit yeah. your prayers, your encouragement, yeah. because again, it's a faith walk. It's, yes, it you know, it's, it's following <laughs> after what Abraham did in the Bible. And God has, he's just, he's opening doors. He's the yeah. one that's opening doors and I'm excited about it. Amen. So Amen. as I plan, you know, to move there and to work there and um, to live there, I just I just need all the encouragement, all the resources and um, all that I need to move there. Amen. One Praise thing God. I'm thankful for is for the relationship that I have with Pastor Anderson. Amen. He and I sat down and had a long talk before I left. And it will be an ongoing talk and uh, 
training and questions asked, what about this? Are you thinking about that? Are you going with this? And um, I'm just excited about that relationship too. So I just, I'm grateful right now. And I'm, I'm living in a spirit of gratefulness, of thankfulness and how the Lord does give us the desires of our heart. Amen. 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 Well, I, I can tell you before you pop off, um, um, it is an exciting life. Um, Man. It, it was my dream that my, my route to get there was a little different than yours. It actually uh, started with having a heart attack in 2017 mm. that basically ended my, my work career. Yeah. And it was just about having to figure out you know, wh what can I do, you know, in order to still be able to, you know, maintain a, a, a marriage that we just gotten married mm -hmm. and um, be able to still do what the Lord wanted us, wanted us to do. Mm -hmm. And I just want to encourage you that he will make a way. Yes. Um, and, 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 you know, Myra and I are at a point now where uh, Maryland is our second home. Our, our home is in Guatemala. Wow. And um, and then because I have a, a long term project in Rwanda, um, I have land purchased there. So I'm building there too another Amen. residence. Amen. So it can be done. I mean, God, God can do anything to those who have shown themselves to be faithful. Amen. And I believe you're in that number. So, you know, he, he never denies those who are are loyal to him. Amen. And it's just about when it will happen, not that it whether it will or will not. It's just right. when. When he's he's giving me that. Yeah. Amen. I, yeah. I just wanna I just wanna leave one thing with you. Um and it, it's just a song of meditation. And join in if you if you can. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord. To thy precious bleeding side. Amen. 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 Thank you for sharing that with us, Sister Jan. Uh, boy, I, I kind of thought maybe that was coming, <laughs> but you, you floored me tonight. <laughs> you, you, you absolutely floored me. Uh, really, that's, uh, that's what he's giving. He's giving me just a heart of worship. I love to worship the Lord. So anytime the Holy Spirit prompts and said, do it, I want to be obedient and just do it. Amen. 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 Go, go in Amen. peace, my dear sister. Amen. Amen. You. I know Listen Sister Tanya. Bike ahead of you and digging those wells like Tiger, Tyler Perry, huh? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> see, you were doing good. See, you were really, see, see. You were really doing good. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I'm, it's, it's an exciting, it's an exciting journey. So I'm I'm up for the challenge. Amen. 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 Tanya. Amen. Amen. Sister Tanya, did, did you want to share something, Sister Tanya? Everybody will see you at Missions Conference 2022. Amen. Look for more information on our church website, colonialbaptistch.org, and we will see you there. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Tanya. Thank you both. Thank you both for joining us tonight. Okay, you're welcome. My pleasure. Thank you, Brother McElwain, for having me. It's It's been good. It's, yes, it's, it's, been, good. it's been my honor. been my honor, yeah. as always. Amen. As always. Um, Again, know that the conference is going to be taking place on... March 12th and also March 13th. Uh, we will give you more information as we get closer to that conference. Just look for us on Facebook at Adoration Talk Radio, 
also on YouTube at the same handle, Adoration Talk Radio. And um, visit uh, Colonial on their website. What, what is the website again for Colonial? ColonialBaptistCH.org. Um, Colonial Amen. 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 So to Reverend Cecil, to Brother Leon, to Sister Tanya, to Sister Jan, we thank you so much for availing yourselves to our audience. Amen. We're looking forward to a powerful conference. Yeah. And we know that it's going to manifest itself in whatever way that God intends it to do. Amen. And, and I cannot wait to be a part of it with my people, my family, or as we say in Guatemala, mi familia. Amen. Mi familia. Amen. <laughs> Amen. God bless you Amen. all. And um, if you don't mind, I, I opened up in prayer. If I may close out in prayer. Amen. Amen. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this opportunity to share as believers, as servants of you, the Most High God. We mm. thank you, oh God, for you, God. Reverend Cecil, for Brother Leon, for Sister Tanya, for Sister Jan. We thank you for the Colonial Baptist Church. We thank you for the leadership under Reverend Anderson, yes. the pastor. Yes. Lord God, we thank you for the vision of the conference. We thank you again for Brother Clarence Smith yes. who literally birthed this into existence, oh God, yes. as a pioneering founder of what we are talking about tonight. And we thank everyone who serves in whatever capacity that Lord God, that uh, together, uh, we truly can, by way of the Holy Spirit, move so many mountains. Yes, yeah. yes. In your name, oh God. In your name. As we in, in depart from this program, may yes. all be blessed and highly favored in Christ yes. Jesus. Yes. May yes. this conference be anointed and yes. appointed for such a time as this. Yes. And yes. we again celebrate yes. the good news of Jesus Christ yes. and the good news yes. that Sister Jan has shared with us yes. in 2023 Amen. for her Amen. to walk into yes. the blessing yes. and to serve with humility yes. and yes. with joy and with your spirit, oh God. Yes, Lord. God. We love you, oh God. Yes, we yes Lord. Thank you. Thank you. And we praise you always. Thank you. In the name above all names in heaven yes. and in earth. Yes, we glorify that name you, God. that can so destroy perfect. the yoke of bondage. Yes. yes. That yes. powerful name of Jesus. Wonderful. We give the thanks Wonderful. in prayer. prayer. Amen. 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 Thanks, Brother Amen. Matt. Thank you. God bless you. Thank 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 you.